Ooh, I don't know if you guys saw that one. Wow, we have made it through. Can I get up this? Holy crap. Not bad. Not a bad way to end the day. Look at that. That has got to be, without a doubt, the most ridiculous stretch of road I have ever been on. Flagona Ultimate Loop. All right, let's get back on the road. Wow, I can't believe how smoothly that went. I mean, truly, I thought it was gonna be so much more difficult than that. But I guess just I got desensitized from the morning. Plus we're on the smaller bike. It just It's kind of become a rite of passage in a way, you know? I get a new bike, I gotta take it up Schnibley Hill Road. <laughs> I do not want that to be a thing. Scratch that. Alright, well I'm gonna get back out to the highway here and uh I'll check in once we get into some, some of the woods over by Mormon Mountain and just finish off the day over there. But I suspect we've got about maybe an hour left on this journey, um, depending on the road conditions and such. But we are, we are about 67 miles in, so we've still got about 30 miles to go. So we're about an hour and a half left on this little expedition, on this extreme loop, the ultimate loop, as it were. Uh, the ultimate odyssey And I'll tell you it was definitely an odyssey. Oh my goodness Honda if you're listening if you're watching I hope uh, <laughs> That certainly proved the capability of your your little vehicle here. I can't think of anything more ridiculous to do uh, at least in Flagstaff on this little bike than uh, what I just went through. <laughs> so, if you're watching and you want to sponsor me, uh, there's a few bikes that I'm really interested in that I'd be happy to test out for you. <laughs> no, but seriously, well done, Honda. Really, well done. This is a great little bike. And the best part is, Monday morning, I'm going to hop on this thing and take it into work. So, I love this thing. I'm so glad I traded in my scooter for this. Not that I didn't love old Scooty. I will always have fond memories of Scooty McScoot face, but uh, I could never do what I did today on Scooty. Not a chance. Well, we're back up here on the plateau and we are just having a delightful little ride through the woods on some really nice class one and class two roads here. Just putting along at 25, 30 miles an hour and I could not have a bigger smile on my face. This is just absolutely a perfect way to end the day, putting through the woods here, getting some beautiful mid-afternoon daylight. <sighs> and just, it's very therapeutic, very relaxing. Well, you know it's an epic day when you get down to your last GoPro battery. <laughs> I brought four with me. This is the last one. So, we're about 82 miles in, and we're on this little, cross connection here and this is the I believe will be the last uh, even semi-technical stretch along the road home once we get up here uh, that road is a little bit more um, improved so we've got this little two and a half mile stretch of fun and uh, we'll get through this and then it should be pretty smooth sailing for the rest of the drive home. It looks like we're 77 miles in, so I was overestimating a little bit, but uh, yeah, so this, you know, this could be a little challenging in spots. It's definitely a primitive road. I was not expecting this uh, on the route that I chose, but we're committed now, and compared to some of the other stuff we did today, uh, this shouldn't pose a major problem. It's just gonna slow us down, that's all. And, it was kind of nice back there. I was cruising along at like 30 miles per hour and sort of mentally just daydreaming a little bit. But now we're, we're back in it. We're back in the thick of it. So we've got a couple miles of, of this to deal with. 
and then we will uh, we should be pretty pretty much home free after that now I have no idea where I'm going <laughs> I think I'm going this way goodness there's some definite water on this road yeah we might actually uh, get stopped by some uh, some tricky mud here we gotta see what happens I guess mud right there Ooh, whoa wow I was not expecting that <laughs> as soon as I hit that mud man <laughs> that front wheel was like whoop. so the mud is slick noted <laughs> avoid mud oh man this is really pretty back in here again I, ha I had no idea I was gonna be putting along this road for sure oh boy yeah it's starting to get a little bit chunky up in here <laughs> are we still on the right road here that's the real question yeah it does look like we are but boy we are definitely moving slowly on it that is for sure wow yeah this is gonna take quite a bit of time my friends definitely more time than I've got on this GoPro battery <laughs> so I'm gonna film here for a little bit and then probably shut her down until we can get through this and then I'll check back in once we're kind of in uh, in the clear and heading back home but this is starting to get really nasty my gosh it's like we're right back on Schnavely Hill again this was the one stretch of road that when I was plotting this route I did not know and I was like ah I can't be that bad but it's pretty bad <laughs> it's pretty bad I'm not gonna lie this is pretty chunky oh come on now all right where are we going is this a fork in the road or what are we doing here <laughs> I have no idea ah I believe we're supposed to be going left like staying on 228 we got a ways to go my friends we're in it baby I was hoping to get home by four but I don't think that's gonna happen seeing as though it's already 340 all right we are legitimately on our last stretch to get back home here i altered the route a little bit just because uh i was up against another road that i just didn't know about and there was all these warning signs that it said rough narrow road and this road i knew so i, I took a two mile detour to get over to this road instead and now i'm cruising along at 30 miles an hour and i We'll probably end up saving time by doing this so it's a little bit of a alteration from my plan but uh, I was kind of ready to just get back on familiar terrain so this is the last stretch we got about 10 miles before we get it back out on pavement and then it's a short uh, five mile hop back to the house so we are in the home stretch uh, we should be done with anything technical <laughs> What you didn't see on camera was that section back there that you got a little sneak peek of was absolutely bonkers. I mean, it was so technical. I just couldn't believe it. Um, and, and, you know, dealing with that at four o'clock in the afternoon, it was very stressful. So I didn't even turn the camera on. I just didn't want to, to be distracted and when I finally popped out on the main road I was so relieved that when I saw that sign that said you know rough road ahead I just said nope <laughs> and I immediately jogged over to this road you know we're, we're done with the fun stuff and right now I just want to make sure I get back in time to to you know take my dog for a walk and uh, you know get dinner ready since it is 4 30 now so yeah that, that's the plan we're coming up actually on this uh open prairie this open meadow up here that i've spent quite a bit of time in you might recall i i flew some some drone footage uh up in here really really pretty spot uh i'm gonna sign off now just in case i just want to say thank you so much for following along on this really long video this was probably one of the most epic day-long adventures I've ever done on two wheels I mean this was pretty pretty wild uh, the combination of both Kazaner Mountain and Schnibley Hill all in the same day and just 
going on some of the most ridiculous back roads. Yeah, I've definitely never done anything this complex uh, and long in a single day. So, I mean, we're gonna be, we're at 92 miles right now. We're definitely gonna hit 100. And, um, but yet we still have a half a tank of gas, which is fantastic. <laughs> I love this bike. So I didn't even need the spare fuel canisters. Nope. And uh, so yeah, thank you so much. Take care, be safe. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you really got a sense of just how capable this ridiculous little bike is. I mean, it's, it's, it's wild. The places you can take this bike, uh, pretty much anywhere. Pretty much anywhere, unless you're limited by ground clearance. So that's all I got. Take care, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Alright, and with that, the Flagstaff Sedona Ultimate Loop Trilogy comes to a glorious end. Now, I will say this was probably the single longest adventure endeavor I've ever uh, attempted on one of my motorcycles in a single day. Now, certainly I've done some of my Colorado multi-day trips where I've recorded on and off throughout the day, but this was the first time that I just recorded non-stop for a full eight hours and it took a long time to get through all that footage and kind of pick out the best parts with all that behind us um, i will say a few reflections about the route that uh, i guess pros and cons things i learned uh, things that surprised me uh, i guess the biggest thing was just uh, first of all, how capable the Trail 125 was. I mean, you saw some of that terrain that I went over. It was crazy. Places that I wouldn't even have dared come near on the Himalayan. And I was just popping through it like it was nothing. Now, with that said, uh, some of that terrain up on the top of Kasner and then down those switchbacks was just uh, not, not very good. Uh, the, I think the worst part of the whole route was probably the steep sections before the switchbacks. Uh, there was a scene where a guy came up on a little 4x4 four four, and that hill that I was on in that section was definitely the steepest gradient of the whole day. It was so steep in fact that even with both brakes engaged, if I pull, pulled my feet off the ground, the bike would start to like skid down on the on the gravel. So very um, terrifying because I just felt like at any point the bike was just gonna lose its grip, uh, its friction, and just go and, and start peeling down the mountain. And so it was it was just very uncomfortable and probably why I will never go back and do this exact route again. Um, so that was, I think, one of the biggest takeaways. Uh, but again, also the fact that I was able to so casually ascend Schnebly Hill Road like it was nothing. I mean, it was just like, oh yeah, I'm just taking a spin up Schnebly Hill. Where, whereas two years ago, um, you know, that was uh, super anxiety ridden. I mean, it was just, it was a, it was almost a torture getting up that because it was so stressful, and. This was just like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna pop over and check out merry-go-round. I'm just gonna zip around these rocks. And I was stopping to narrate where I had stalled before. It's just kind of wild when I think about it in retrospect. So all that is to say, um, the route was fantastic. It was exhausting. It took me almost eight hours to get through the whole route. For the most part, I stuck to my plan route. I did also have a slight reroute around Sedona. I think the route I'd originally planned would have actually been really fun. But if I had done that, I don't think I would have been able to finish the entire loop by dark. So I made that calculation in my head and I said, you know what? I'd rather go over to Schnabel Hill Road and enjoy it, and take my time up it, than try to do this little bit down here and then get rushed at the end of the day. And as you saw, that would have not ended well because I thought for sure that the end of my day was going to be this cakewalk. And then I ended up dealing with that really nasty forest road that was the cutoff uh, in the middle of the woods. And there is sections in there that I didn't get on film that were just brutal, uh, really, really bad. So those are my reflections. Highly recommend this route, but I will say if you're planning on doing it, I've attached the GPX file. Please be careful and know that there are sections where you are very likely gonna drop your bike and if you've got some big adventure bike, like some big BMW or something, no bueno, don't do it. 
I would say do not attempt this route with a bike that weighs over 300 pounds because you're just not, it's just not going to end well. So dirt bike, small dual sport, or a small trail bike like the Trail 125. You're good. Otherwise, uh, probably best to find an alternate route. So with that said, I will leave you with this fun parting thought. For those of us that live up here in Flagstaff, we always joke about how there's really only two practical ways to get down into Sedona. You either take the interstate or you take the I-89 switchbacks down into Oak Creek. Well, if I showed anything on this video, I showed that it's possible to get down into Sedona via Kasner Mountain Road, although probably not recommended. So that's my fun takeaway. And Honda, if you're listening, if you want to sponsor me, I'm just saying, you know, this is a great video showing the capability of your bike. There's some other Hondas that I'm kind of interested in, you know, I'm just kind of throwing it out. I'm spitballing here. I'm just spitballing. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, jokes aside, uh, thank you guys so much for, for following along. And I had a blast doing this and it was kind of on a whim. I, I really kind of threw this together at the last minute. So I do have a few other good ideas bouncing around in this old noggin of mine. So anyway, thanks so much. Take care. I will see you in the next video. And... Thank you all for your support. Bye. Flagona Ultimate Loop.